Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the Rockstar Flipper YouTube channel on a Thursday night. It is, what's today, December 7th? It is December 7th, first week of December 2017 in the books and uh, the end of fourth quarter, just three weeks away. So uh, welcome in everyone. Give everyone just a minute to jump in the chat. We're going to talk about a very, very popular, huge topic that I get messaged and emailed about a lot. And uh, we've talked about it before, but with fourth quarter coming to an end and everyone wanting to do some new year's resolutions and get started in some new things. We're going to discuss um, eBay and Amazon and about doing both transferring just from eBay over to Amazon, doing both and uh, deciding how to sell stuff, where to sell stuff, when to sell stuff, what to sell stuff, all that good stuff. We're going to talk about it. Let me say hi to everyone. And then we'll jump into what I wanted to discuss tonight. I need to bring up the chat. Excuse me. Uh, 360 Vintage, what's up? I see you guys. We got uh, 60 people in the chat already. So uh, Father Son Treasure from Chicago, the Windy City, Chi Town. What's going on? How you doing? Uh, Diego says I was a minute late, unacceptable. Uh, your clock's a minute fast, buddy. Appreciate that. Um, <laughs> hey, Adam, how you doing? What it be, people? Lance Walden in Walden Pickers, who I was lucky enough, fortunate enough to meet over in Las Vegas. You guys come to Vegas next year, you might meet Walden Pickers too. You never know. Um, what's going on, Jennifer? Pel is it Peltier or Peltier? I never know if that name is pronounced with the, uh, the foreign accent or not. Tina Krause, how you doing? And Amber, Amber, how are you? I see you. Welcome to everyone who uh, has come to hang out for Thursday. Hopefully this show gives you guys a lot of education, a lot of information. I hope this live chat, whether you're here live or whether you're here in, um, in a recorded later on watching it, the rewind, I hope that it helps you and I hope that you get some good information out of it, especially tonight's video because a lot of you guys really want to know about Amazon, eBay. Many of you don't sell on Amazon. Many of you have no idea about Amazon. So I decided to do quite a few videos about it. I did one earlier regarding private label. And if you have any questions about that private label video, please leave it in the comment section down below of that video and not this one. And, uh, and I'll do the best to help you. Scott in Omaha, how you doing? TD Paul, what's up? What's going on? Treasure hustlers, tons of good people. Thrifty 5050 vet who was nice enough to donate that, uh, that giveaway prize. Thank you for doing that. How you doing? San Diego, South California, Jennifer Howe, glad you're in Southern California, away from all those fires. Guys, please keep all the people in mind that are up there in uh, LA and, and um, West California, uh, Oxnard, Ventura, Camarillo, all those areas, Santa Barbara, all getting hit by fires. Uh, our admin and one of our moderators to this Facebook page and to this YouTube channel, Megan Reed, those of you that know her, lives in Camarillo. So she's really, really, really close to this fire. She actually posted a picture of, um, and I may have it, of the fires right out her doorstep. Here you go. This picture is out her back door. That's out the back of her house. And she also did some Instagram stories on it. So keep those people in, in your thoughts and keep the Goodwill Outlet and, and Camarillo Oxnard in your thoughts too. Um, Monrovia, California, Ocala, lots of people all over the place. So we have a lot of friends, um, in California. Uh, can you please say hi to my mom, Enza Danino? Yes, Steven, how you doing in Enza? Is it Enza Danino? Hopefully I said that right. How you doing? Good evening. Orange County, California, lots of you guys. Build the brand in Oregon. So yeah, a lot of you guys up there in California, we got you in our thoughts. Thank you guys for all that you do and being part of the community and we'll make sure that we keep thinking of you and make sure that those fires get taken care of. Hopefully those firefighters that are working so hard will get them uh, knocked down and get them pushed back sooner than later before those winds kick up anymore. So let's jump into the eBay, Amazon topic. We are a couple minutes into the chat and I wanna make sure that we, uh, we get to topics. So a lot of people that watch this on the rewind uh, don't have to fast forward too, for, too far forward. Um, so the question that I get asked the most is about how do I determine what to buy for eBay versus what to buy for Amazon, like which platform to put them on, or if I'm an eBay seller only, which a majority of my followers start at eBay or they are eBay only, how do you decide that you're gonna go over to Amazon or what to get to? <clears throat> and this question was a lot easier to answer a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. Um, for those of you that don't know, Amazon has come out with a lot of restrictions. And this goes for primarily new sellers that try to get on the platform, but even for some sellers that are established. So I've had an Amazon seller's account for probably three years. I'd have to look back at the date, but I want to say it was the beginning to middle of 2014 that I started Amazon and really started selling, you know, into 14. So even with my account, I am still gated in health and beauty and grocery. I can't sell any of those. I can't sell the big box uh, designer names. I can't sell Adidas, Under Armour, Nike, 
Um, all of those are restricted for me and getting ungated is an act of God in most of those. I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's very hard. What people don't understand about Amazon is in order to sell a health and beauty or a grocery or a Nike, you have to have an invoice, uh, uh, a wholesale or distributor invoice and letter of approval from that company that you want to sell. And that just isn't something that you can just get. You can't go to Goodwill and buy a pair of Nike shoes and give them the receipt. They will decline that, uh, almost guaranteed instant decline. So it's hard to get un ungated. I'm even gated in some other random things that I can't sell. Uh, other clothing brands, um, I'm gated for like Pokemon video games, certain ones, some I can sell, some I can't. Uh, music CDs, the music CD uh, media um, category is highly restrictive. I am open to some of it, but not all of it. And so that makes the answer to selling on Amazon pretty easy that you need to sell items that you can, you're allowed to sell, first of all. You gotta figure that out. The easiest way is to just go find items and scan them and the Amazon app, the seller app will tell you if you're restricted. You can certainly welcome to try to get ungated. Don't pay anyone to ungate you, those services are crap. Um, try to get invoices. If you buy from a supplier, it's possible, but just work on what you can get that you can sell on Amazon. Otherwise, just put it on eBay. And some of the most popular items that are ungated on Amazon that aren't too hard to sell, books are a good one. Um, video games are a good one for the most part. There are a few restricted, like Pokemon. Um, books, and, books and video games, media, really good. Toys and games, right now during fourth quarter, there are toy and game restrictions, but after the first of the year, toys and games will open up for a lot more sellers. Um, board games, uh, puzzles, uh, any of that kind of stuff is really good. Small handheld video game systems and video games, electronics, iPods, iPads, tablets, all very good things to sell if you work in those markets. Speakers and headphones, um, a ton of those are open. Don't try to get on the Beats, uh, Beats by Dre, Beats by Apple, whatever they are now. Um, those are highly restrictive. I've sold quite a few pair of those, but be careful how you do anything with the word Beats in them. Um, Otterbox is a big no-no, but accessories are good. Um, and of course, private label, which I made a video on earlier. So I'm um, going to look at the, uh, now that I've said that, I'm going to look at the chat for just a minute. Um, snowing in Michigan, fires in California. It's crazy how this country works. Um, TD Paul says you're better off doing private label. Private label is the ultimate yes, but there are things about it. Um, Diego says you can get ungated in grocery pretty easy. I haven't tried. I don't, I'm not really interested in grocery. Yeah, you can upgrade from an Amazon individual to a pro. Um, Jeff Cole, thank you so much. Uh, fees were crazy. Amber's Treasures, Amazon fees can be more expensive, but they can also be cheaper on some stuff. There have been things that I paid like 8 or 9% and they were cheaper than, than eBay. So make sure you get a list of the items that you want to sell on Amazon. Now, majority of the time, the items that you sell on Amazon almost always sell for more money than eBay, but you've got to look at the price schedule. So a lot of the categories on Amazon are different than eBay because eBay will charge you the flat, you know, 9% plus PayPal. Amazon may charge 18% for one category and 10% for another and 15 for another. So you have to learn that as well and get educated on the fees so that you know what you're going to be paying and, and laying out of your hand before you sell items. So very important that you educate yourself on that as well. There are plenty of Amazon calculators. Now the biggest question I get is FBA. Everyone wants to know about FBA. What is it? How do you use it? What do you do with it? FBA is simply, for those of you that don't know, a way that instead of you storing your inventory and shipping it, you simply buy up all your merchandise, you pack it up, you get a label from Amazon, you ship it into one of their warehouses and they will store it and when it sells, they will ship it. You never have to touch it again. It's forget it, buy it, forget it, leave it and it's done. Um, now, there's obvious advantages to that. You don't have to store stuff. You don't need a warehouse. You don't need employees. You don't need to ship stuff. But it does cost. There are fees associated with that. And um, and sometimes, you know, the storage fees of them storing it, they do charge uh, a small storage fee for items that don't sell after a certain amount of time. So those are all things to take into uh, consideration as well. And there is an Amazon FBA calculator. So you can process an item and you can say, I paid $2 for it, it's gonna sell for 20. And they will calculate the FBA fees and the selling fees and the storage fees. And you can see what you're gonna profit off of it. Ideally, FBA is what you should use because shipping everything into Amazon frees you up. And what you pay Amazon to take care of your stuff is way cheaper 
than what you would pay to hire employees and rent a building and pay for insurance and pay for electric. It's way cheaper to just let Amazon handle it because they get such discounted rates on shipping and the fees are so cheap. Ideally, that's what you want to do. Now, there are some reasons why you would want to handle merchandise on your own. Returns are one reason. Uh, some people just like to have the inventory in hand. There's a few reasons, but for the most part, FBA is the is the essential way that you should be leaning towards, especially if you private label and have quantity. Um, and so that's the third thing about Amazon FBA. So first is finding the items that you can sell that you're not restricted in. Second is deciding on whether you're gonna keep the items in house or whether you're gonna send them off to Amazon, which obviously that's a better bet. The third option is whether you're gonna buy established merchandise, that means goods you find out there, Samsung, Sony, Adidas, Nike, whatever you're open for, or if you're gonna create your own product, your own privately labeled product that you're gonna create a business name for, a product name, a brand name, you're gonna have it produced in China or India or overseas or wherever you get it from, even domestic maybe. You're gonna have it shipped to you as a generic item, you're gonna slap your brand name, your packaging, you're gonna slap a UPC on it, and you're gonna ship it in Amazon to handle. Um, so that's your third route. Private label is very good. It's a great route and ideally, it is the perfect route because you get to control the price, you get to control the market, the brand name, you get to decide what you're gonna pay for the items, what you, where you source them. You are not restricted from selling your own item. Amazon is not restricting you because they don't even know what the item is. Um, you get to you know, control sales essentially because it's up to you to market it and advertise it. And it's your product, it's your name, and you can buy it in huge quantities. So this is, this is the best route to go, but it also takes the most time, the most money, the most advertising, and the most work. Keep that in mind. As great as private label is, click a button, order a thousand of these, slip a thousand, slap a thousand stickers on them, ship them into Amazon, and you're done for the month. Well, that sounds great, but somebody's gotta buy those thousand pieces. So keep that in mind. Um, Paul, thank you so much for the $2 super chat. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I hear the wrecking crew. They are, they're pitter pattering around. I saw that. Uh, if you get banned on Amazon, you can get back. You have to write them a letter of how you're going to improve. Um, sometimes they don't allow you back. Um, I have heard that eBay is going to do something similar to FBA in um in 2018 i don't know what it's going to am amount to but we'll have to keep an eye out it is not impossible to get back if amazon bans you that's not true i know people that have gotten back on um getting a upc there is a website chris magnelli i used to get them off ebay and and quick purchases but now apparently there's a website you have to buy them from um how do I scan some of this merchandise to price it for eBay or Amazon and not feel uncomfortable about what people think of me in the store? Well, that's because those people aren't paying my bill, they're not paying my mortgage, and they're not paying my groceries or my electric. And in three or four months, I'm not gonna look back and think to myself, oh my goodness, if only I had had enough courage to scan that merchandise in the store, I could have made enough profit to pay my mortgage. Instead, I'm sleeping over under an overpass. It's that simple. You gotta get past the scared. Get past the nervous get past all that stuff and just go to work. How do you think people feel out in town when they're carrying around a selfie camera and they're YouTube vloggers and they're vlogging like this at every store and every place they're going or me or anybody for that matter uh, that's on YouTube and care what people think about us? You know what? You're not paying my bills. You're not creating a YouTube channel. You're not creating an eBay store with good merchandise that I'm scanning. You're not doing any of that. And you know what, when that money rolls in from stuff that I sold because I scanned it and I had enough courage to sit and scan it inside the store, trust me, a couple of days you'll be over it that quick. Who cares what they think, honestly. Um, Noanda, you can definitely get back on Amazon. Uh, eBay Valet is one thing, it's garbage, but eBay is supposed to be coming out with a new, um, a new similar FBA type thing. I need help now for Red's resales. Glad you could, uh, you could uh, make it to the live show. Thank you so much. Hi, Ruggers Customs. How you doing? No fear. No fear. Absolutely no fear of the uh, people watching you scan. Have no, no fear at all. Absolutely. Um, and Amazon's a great marketplace. I love eBay. You guys know that eBay is my thing, but Amazon is a great way to send stuff and, and just make extra money. Like you can, you know, I've sold stuff on Amazon that I was gonna sell on eBay for 20. I throw it up on Amazon for 29.99 and it sells the same day. It's been sitting on eBay for 20 for less money, not selling for two weeks and then I throw it on Amazon and it's, it's done. 
So, right. Thrift flip repeat. Pretend like you're in a thrift store. Pretend like you're in a Goodwill outlet store. I mean, you're reselling. Who cares? Who really cares? If I told you that scanning an item was going to make you $1,000 profit because you found this item in the store and you're going to scan it and it turns out you can make $1,000 profit on it, would you care what somebody thought? No, you would be scanning this item and taking it home and making $1,000. That's how you have to treat every single item, every day, every second of your life, that everything you do is worth exponentially whatever you want it to be worth, a million dollars, a thousand dollars, a million tons of enjoyment, whatever it is, do it. Scan it, film it, photograph it. I don't care what other people think. If it's not illegal or it's not against policy of where I am and I'm not going to get kicked out, then I'm doing it. If they have a policy that says don't film, I don't want to get kicked out of the store and lose an opportunity to buy stuff so I won't film. But like the Goodwill outlets don't like me filming. So I don't film in there. The only time I film in there is if I think I can sneak a couple of clips and I think I'm not going to get in trouble for it. So other than that, man, go for it. Do it. Scan, film, do everything. I'm new to eBay shipping is where I'm stuck. I have a great view, uh, a great video, My View 930. Hey, Laura, how you doing, Laura Conrad? Uh, my View 930, go to my video tab on my YouTube channel and search for the word shipping. Great video on that. Um, need an app for eBay like Amazon seller kit flipper. You can use the eBay app to scan stuff. They absolutely have a scanning and they're great YouTube videos for scanning. Absolutely. Thomas hit the nail on the head. Um, yeah, make friends with a lot of the store managers as well. Then they won't give you a hard time. That's a great point. Um, um, uh, Layden, great, great point. eBay app does have a scanner. Uh, Paul, a baby fat jean jacket. I haven't sold baby fat in a while. Probably fifteen twenty dollar item if I had to guess, depending on how rare it is and how um, how uh, how desirable the item might be. Scott Schollenberger, Amazon private label for dummies. I just did a video on it. You might want to check it out. Jamie, what's going on, buddy? eBay app does have a scanner. Just click on the search bar. Let me show you guys. Let me show you the eBay app scanner real quick. Give me just a second. Look, so maybe, maybe I can show you guys the scanner. Okay, so at the top of the, why is this not working? Let me show you guys. Okay, so this is the eBay app, right? So up here at the top, this little bar, see this? See there's a camera over there in the search bar? There's like a little camera right there. So what you'll do is just click on that camera and it's going to pop up with, it's going to pop up with this, this search result here. It's going to say image search or scan barcode. So just click the scan barcode, and that's what pops up right there. So then we can take – let me see if I can make this work right so you guys can see. Give me a second. We could take this, and we could scan this barcode. Ugh. Maybe I can make it work. This is really hard to do, you guys. Here, I'll do it here. Uh, there it goes. Nope, it didn't scan. Anyways, I'll just scan it normal, and then you guys will get to see what it looks like. So I scan the barcode. And... Well, it doesn't find this item because, well, this is my private label item. It's not on eBay. It's only on Amazon. Anyways, normally it would come up with a result and it would show you all the search results. So that's how easy it is. It's right up there at the top of the um, of the eBay app. So you should have no problem with that. Um, having a hard time with the UPC on Amazon with Daniel Cremier. Uh, send me a picture 360 vintage of the full upc and i will try to take a look at that for you uh you have to buy barcodes just in inventory thank you i appreciate that reliable nfl football on thursday and me <laughs> uh jungle scout seems to be a great product those of you that don't know what jungle scout is it's an amazon research tool it kind of keeps track of inventory and sales numbers um, for products on Amazon, something worth looking into. There is a price to pay for Jungle Scout. It is not 100% free. I think it has a trial or maybe someone can tell me. Um, but anyways, what's up, RX Saver? How you doing? Um, I use my phone for all scanning. It's pretty much as fast as I need it to be. Uh, there are some third-party scanners that store information and you don't need an internet connection. So if a lot of stores that you're at don't have good... Um, 
you know, service, cell service in them, I would recommend a third party scanner. And basically what happens is you at home, before you leave out, you download all the current prices, it saves them. And then when you're out in the store, you don't need a cell connection, you can just scan with it and uh, it'll bring up the latest price from when you left your house. I don't use tactical arbitrage, Brian. Uh, I think Jungle Scout's very good. A lot of people like it. Uh, how much do you recommend to start Amazon? You can start Amazon buying individual products with just a few dollars. You can buy, you know, video games for a couple bucks. If you want to do private label, I don't know anybody that doesn't start private label that has $5,000 to their name or more. You could certainly do it with $1,000, but you're not going to make a ton of money off private label unless you can buy big quantities. You can buy a hundred of an item for two bucks a piece and spend 200 bucks or 500 of an item and spend a thousand bucks, get them all in and put them all out and start selling them. But you still got to have room to market and advertise and get reviews. And you, you need some money to do private label, regular Amazon, just to buy some iPods and buy some video games and buy some books and send them in. You could start with 50 bucks, a hundred bucks, a couple hundred bucks. It doesn't matter. Um, have I ever sold rockstar jeans? No, I have not actually. Uh, Jessica, new with tag clothing on Amazon if you're ungated for it. Uh, yes, I have sold some clothing through that. Side Hustle Pro, which is Chaz and Trista, they do use tactical arbitrage and uh, they seem to have success with it. So it's something that I would recommend. I don't have experience myself with it. What's up, Shane Barber? How you doing? Yeah, Anita started Amazon with 500. That's probably a good amount to get started. If you're just learning Amazon, don't go dump 10 grand into it. <laughs> Start slow and learn it and then get rolling, you know, from a couple hundred to 500 to a thousand to a couple thousand and, and roll from there. Learn before you just dive in head first. So yeah, Anita is going to spend money on advertising. When you have private label, you have to advertise. You have to use Facebook ads. You have to use Instagram ads. You have to use PPC, which is pay per click ads, AdWords, Google AdSense. You got to advertise and market your product to get it in front of as many people as you can. Drummer, to find what you are ungated in is kind of a reverse question answer. Basically, if you want to sell something, just scan it in the Amazon app and it will tell you if it's restricted or not. It will say you're restricted, unable to sell this. It's pretty much that easy. Um, I think that about covers the Amazon uh, side of things. I don't think there's a whole lot else about Amazon that you guys don't already know or don't understand completely. It's, it's not that difficult. It seems overwhelming in the beginning, but it's really just as easy as eBay. You're just listing an item, you're describing it, you're quantitying, you're pricing it, and you're either selling it from your building or you're shipping it to Amazon. That's pretty much it. Can you get a seller account without being a current active seller so you can scan some items? Yes, Thrifty Nickel, you can sign up for the seller um, Amazon account for free instead of paying the $40 a month. It's just if you sell anything, it's a dollar per item. But if you just want it for research and for scanning, you can absolutely sign up for it and not pay anything. So keep that in mind. You can do that. Paul is in Sef I mean, um, Tom is in Sefner. Absolutely. Customers don't leave a lot of reviews on Amazon. That's why people used to pay for it. Rebecca Thatcher. Her sister Rebecca is in Massachusetts, Paul. So hi to Rebecca. I got to sneeze, y'all. <clears throat> and I'm going to get a bunch of bless me's. <laughs> um, Thrifty Nickel, yes, I haven't sold anything on Amazon in a while. Keep my item open, my account open. Yeah, you can keep the Amazon account open without paying the $40 a month. Keep that in mind, you guys. Um, nope, you're welcome, Thrifty Nickel. Appreciate it. And if anyone has any other questions about Amazon, I am gonna do a couple more videos on it over the next week or two. So there will be more Amazon uh, videos coming because I know a ton of people wanna learn Amazon. They wanna branch off into it. They wanna add it as a second stream of income or third stream or fourth stream. There's some really great people to watch for Amazon. Side Hustle Pro, which is Chaz and Trista. Um, if you guys might remember, I met them in Minnesota. Uh, we went to dinner together. Um, they were in the Uber that we drove and Trista was chasing a bunny in the vlog. Um, that is Chaz and Trista. They are married from Oregon and they do an awesome job at Amazon. Um, there's quite a few of you guys in the Facebook group that do Amazon. Quite a you guys, few of you guys in Instagram that are doing really good Amazon. Uh, Kaylee Meteor Girl does um, CDs and music in Amazon. She's ungated, so she does a great job. There's a lot of people doing um, Amazon for sure. 
Um, Posh and Macari, 360 Vintage has a really great question. So I don't sell on Posh and Macari. I have both apps. I've checked them out. I don't have a lot of time to do them. Obviously, I have this going on, and I have eBay, and I have Amazon, and I have YouTube, and I have affiliates, and I have a ton of stuff. So Posh and Macari got pushed to the bottom. Poshmark is a really good um, platform, and I think a lot of people sell a lot of stuff on Poshmark, and I think that they do um, – Really, really good. Yeah, Thomas, their kid is really cute. Yeah, Trista and Chaz have a really, really cute um, little one. So um, there, there's a lot of sellers, especially on Instagram, who do Poshmark. And I one comes to mind that's pretty good, um, Thrifting Debutante. Uh, her name is Sydney. And she actually does quite a few videos about Poshmark and reselling and uh, vlogs and whatnot. She has a cool YouTube channel. Um, I think Lindy sells on Poshmark. Um, that is, that's Sydney's, um, YouTube channel. You could check her out. Uh, there's, there's people with more experience on Poshmark than I have. So I would recommend, um, you know, using them to your advantage rather than me. Um, I'm not an experienced Poshmark seller. They are, or Macari for that matter. Uh, and you know, like people like Deb and Paul DeLeo, they also do Amazon. So there's a lot of people you can learn from. Um, I would say Jay and Jaws Flip, they're asking about spreading yourself too thin. And I think that that's a good point. If you're trying to sell on five or six platforms, it's hard. If you're trying to do one or two, you can kind of focus your attention to that one or two platforms and, and get really good at them. Once you go beyond two or three platforms, it starts to be real really hard to put enough attention into any one. We all know how much time one platform takes. Two platforms is kind of, you know, giving yourself a, a good workload. Once you're beyond that, it's, it's kind of hard. It's hard to keep track of them. It's hard to cross post. It's hard to keep up with them, to ship, to answer questions. It's all, you know, a lot of work. And so that's why I kind of stick to two. And there are people that just do it better than I do. So um, Connie's got a great point about um, Poshmark being a lot of social media and sharing. It is. It's a big social suck. But you can sell a lot of stuff on Poshmark. And their return policy is a little different. Their shipping policy is different. Their shipping fee, their returns, everything is different on Poshmark. So um, your Poshmark girl is going to be Sydney. Your Macari person, um, Jamie Pace knows Macari pretty well. Jessica just started Posh three weeks ago, $100. That's not bad. Um, I would say that uh, – I would say Macari is good to learn from Jamie. I would say Posh from Sydney – Megan knows a little bit about the platform. She's done some work on those. So Megan Reed is good to learn. I'm just not as, as versed on those as well, you know, as everyone else is. So um, if you want to learn those channels, please, you know, or those platforms, please check out those channels from the other people. Um, you can find Sydney on Instagram under thrifting debutante or under uh, her name, Sydney L or under YouTube as well. And Jamie Pace is on Facebook is Jamie Pace. Um, he's here on YouTube as Jamie Pace. You can ask him about Macari. He sells a lot on there. Um, you can ask a lot of people, a lot. Uh, Colorado, your first promotion. Good job. 30-minute method on Poshmark, another good one. Colorado running promotions. Everyone running promotions, right? <laughs> Does anyone want to learn from Jamie? You know what? Call Jamie what you want, but he knows how to sell stuff. Jamie sells a lot of merchandise, so say what you want about him. Um, no snow in Florida. We are going to get snow in the panhandle of Florida. Kate wanted me to drive six hours to Panama City to see snow. That's a long drive to see some snow in Florida, but it would be kind of cool. Cha-ching, cha-ching, you are welcome. Thank you so much. And um, Colorado, what kind of promotion did you run? Everyone's running promotions, right? Running some kind of sale. Buy two, get one free. Buy three, free shipping, 10% off, something. Somebody, if, if you need an instant answer to get a few more sales, uh, it's not a guarantee, but it almost is a guarantee. Just run a sale. Run some kind of store promotion. And I don't mean promoted listings. I mean promotions, a sale, a 10%, whatever. Your sales will will change, trust me. Snow is a four-letter word. <laughs> uh, Nadia is from Panama City Beach originally, and she's in Tampa now. Floridians can't drive when it rains, much less when it snows. That is true. Floridians can't drive when it's sunny outside. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Less of a drive to Georgia for snow. I know, Joni, I know. I could fly to Chicago and always have snow in six hours. 
That's funny. Get $10 off 50 Scott Schollenberger. That's a good sale. I thought about running the sale like that, like 10 or $15 off 50. That was my original first thought for a sale. So run a promotion if you haven't. Um, if you're interested in more Amazon, leave comments in the other video or this one. I'll try to help you out the best I can. The other one is about private label. This is about deciding between whether choosing eBay or Amazon is better and for what products and how to know if you can sell on Amazon. Again, I don't recommend any one over the other. They're each good in their own way. eBay allows broken items, used clothing, you know, flaws. Amazon is more geared towards electronics and brand new items and consumer goods and home goods and that sort of thing. So use the platforms together. Make sure you sell on both. You want to get deposits from both platforms each and every month. Keep that in mind. Yeah, ka-ching, ka-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching, the newly listed eBay listings will typically appear higher to the top. Um, once in a lifetime photo opportunities, shorts on the beach with snow in Florida. I'm down. Call me up. Call me. We'll, we'll make that happen for sure. Uh, do you get charged for promotions? No, there's no charge for promotions, but you are giving people a sale or a discount. So you're not going to make quite as much. <laughs> All right, y'all. So I'm going to leave you with that, with Amazon selling. I hope you guys decide to take advantage of Amazon selling. If you have questions, leave them for me, Facebook me, email me, rockstar flipper at Gmail, whatever you need to do. I'll help you guys as much as I can. I'm going to have some more specific instead of general, specific Amazon emails coming. And uh, hopefully you guys learn a lot from them. And uh, we'll have probably another video by the end of the week uh, weekend on Amazon and uh, some more eBay videos. And uh, with that, have a wonderful night. Check out the description box down below everything you need for Amazon, eBay selling. If you want to make YouTube videos, if you need a microphone or a computer or a camera or a light kit or all that stuff, it's all down below. And of course, my eBay store is down there as well. Anytime you shop on eBay, use that link, bookmark it, get to the store using that link. No matter who you shop from, it helps me. I really appreciate it. And um, we're getting close to Christmas, guys, getting excited. So I'll see you next time, Friday, tomorrow. Have a wonderful evening. Good night and good luck on sales. <laughs>